much. Congratulations uh, to the Calgary Flames. It's been six long years, but uh, we're all excited uh, as a city, and I think everybody is excited and want to share in potentially a long playoff run. Uh, as a service, we've been through this a couple times. Once in 2004, where we went to the seventh game of the, or sorry, the final game of the uh, of the last round, and then of course in 2009. So. We know of the um, uh, potential and how folks like to gather, certainly in proximity uh, to the Saddle Dome and the region around the Saddle Dome. So our plan is based on uh, what we've previously experienced along 17th Avenue. I think the, the key thing that uh, we see, and, and I'm sure a number of Calgarians have already noted, is that environment along 17th Avenue has changed over the last six years. There's a few of the, I would call, anchor establishments uh, that uh, played a prominent role in previous uh, playoff celebrations that are, are no longer along 17th Avenue, but certainly we know it is an entertainment district. It's in close proximity to the Saddle Dome, and we've already heard, as probably many of you have, that uh, people would love to uh, reignite the excitement and the spontaneity of celebrations uh, along that 17th Avenue area. So in anticipation of that, uh, we have a plan that has been put in place. It, uh, in the early stages, of course, we'll just use on-duty officers and uh, folks that are, are working. There will be uh, contingency plans that if we need to call in additional resources, of course, that's always built into the plan, whether we have to bring them in from adjoining districts or areas or if we, in fact, have to call them in. Uh, those things are all built into the plan. What I can tell you about last night is there was a few hundred fans that uh, were, were quite excited and quite boisterous along 17th Avenue, uh, but very respectful of the, uh, the community and, and the businesses along 17th Avenue. And we had uh, no concerns whatsoever for them or, or with them. So our primary concern moving forward is, is always going to be public safety. I think we have to balance that against the folks who live in that area and the businesses who operate in that area. I know it's uh, it's a great idea to, to, or in some minds, it's a great idea to come down from wherever you live and, and just converge in that area, but uh, uh, we have to be respectful and mindful of the fact that people do live there and businesses are trying to operate there. So we know that we will try to balance folks who want to come down and celebrate with the rights of, of the other citizens and businesses that operate in that area. So as we've done before, um, there is an expectation of proper behavior. Uh, the Calgary Flames being in the playoffs isn't a, uh, uh, a free pass to, to make, commit crime and, and, and behave poorly anywhere in the city. So, you know, we will try to manage folks that do come down with the expectation that uh, you are accountable for your own activities and you're accountable for your own behavior and that folks who choose to break the law uh, during the course of whatever celebrations they choose to engage in, uh, we will take the appropriate action. I think our expectation is that 17th Avenue is a busy area. We know that. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, vehicle traffic along 17th Avenue. And uh, our hope is that whatever celebrations happen, and, and of course, spontaneous celebrations are, are often unpredictable. So we, we have to be able to adapt quickly to, to numbers and, and to the dynamics of the crowd. But at this point, our expectation is that people will remain on sidewalks, that the traffic flow will continue, or continue along 17th Avenue, that they will behave, they will be respectful of the community and the people who live in that community. And at this point, we'll have our on-duty resources there to police that, but you will not see a significant presence of police officers uh, unless it's absolutely necessary. So we, we will be in the area. You won't see a a big obvious number of police officers, but the plan is in place that if we are required there, uh, we will be there. Are we talking about uh, you know, zero tolerance for any kind of open liquor on the street? Yeah, I think, so. I think that's reasonable. I think that's the behavior part. I mean, the, there's no free pass to commit crime. Uh, there's no free pass for, for bad behavior, urination, all those things that we see, the public disorder stuff. Again, this is a community that people live in. This is a community that people have businesses in. We have to be mindful of, of their, their rights as uh, members of that community. So just because the Flames are in the playoff doesn't mean that uh, you're going to be getting away with things that you would normally not be getting away with. So 
uh, we will police uh, with that in mind that uh, people will be held accountable. I don't want to use zero tolerance because there's always some degree of um, discretion that officers can use, but uh, we hope that the public um, respects that and uh, that the behavior um, along 17th Avenue um, or that they behave accordingly. Yes? Um, have you taken a look at the experience in Vancouver a couple of years ago? Apparently they had a little May or something. Yeah. Um, have you learned anything? Yeah, I mean, any time, the, the one thing about policing is that um, there's uh, never a lack of other jurisdictions that we can look at and we can learn from. In fact, uh, we did speak to uh, the Vancouver folks after that, uh, kind of like lessons learned. And so I can't say if there's anything that um, I can definitively say that was taken away from Vancouver to apply to this plan, but we can certainly see when you have large gatherings of people uh, the police presence, the expectations that are set beforehand. So those would be discussions probably moving forward with the city. If there are plans that are put in place, if the celebration grows where we try to, to manage a large group of people. But right now, um, I think it's just going to be where we're, we're going to see uh, what 70th Avenue looks like, the numbers that come out, and uh, if there's any issues or concerns that, uh, as I say, the scale, the plan will scale up. What I recall from that is that there were large large screens where the public could gather. Yeah. So you, they, in addition to what people might go to an establishment or whatever, there's actually a public place where people would come. That was correct. And there uh, haven't been any are, discussions. Are you, are you, would you, to the extent that you can, would you discourage that from happening here in Calgary? Or what, what are your well, I think we have had that happen in Calgary in the past with uh, the 88 Olympics where we had the medal ceremonies down at Olympic Plaza. We have had those large gatherings. Um, I think we can see the potential of things going bad when you have a large group of people who are really, really excited at a certain period of time. And I think, uh, I can't speak for the city of Calgary, but I would say from a policing perspective, um, what we saw in Vancouver would be something that would be forefront in our minds as we're planning moving forward with dealing with large crowds. But I don't know what the plans are for the city of Calgary in, in these playoff preparations. What, what are the tools in your toolbox to sort of manage things other than just having people there? Yeah, I mean, we can, uh, we have access to CCTV, to remote CCTV. Um, we have access to, I mean, when you look at the, the number of uh, strategies that were employed in 2004 and 2009, where we shut down the entire avenue, where we limited or quit uh, vehicle traffic altogether, um, officers both overt and covert within the crowd just to you know keep an eye on the dynamics so all of those tools are available in the toolbox at this point as of last night it's part of a plan that hopefully we don't have to roll out but if we do uh, this isn't a surprise to us we've been here before we saw how Calgary reacted we've seen how other jurisdictions have dealt with or have had issues and so that's something that we if it's predictable is preventable and we can plan for it and that's what we're doing.